when it comes to predicting who is who in the Tory party, you've always got to remember there was a time when no one knew who Michael Gove was, David Cameron, Tony Blair, you know, even Jacob Rees-Mogg. <laughs> there was a time when no one knew who this, you know, guy was. And recently we have had a couple of individuals who have rocketed to stardom. Timmy Badnock being one of them. That even though she claims, oh yes, Michael Gove is not pulling the strings at all, um, there's a lot to really suggest. Uh, without his backing, she would still be this, you know, minor, shall we say, culture war figure on the back benches. And, well, as we've said we've before and reported there were a lot of Tories who were very upset, very disappointed, shall we say, in her performance. But there are, of course, always new faces that we should, you know, bring attention to as who is this person? Oh, keep an eye out for this person. Remember, we did a video about Penny Mordant uh, many, many a year ago where we said, look, you've got to watch out for this person because she's on resignation watch and she's become the leader of the One Nation Tory uh, grouping. So she's sort of suddenly become quite powerful, quite influential. Will will she maybe possibly one day be a leader, a mover, and a shaker in the Tory party? Well, this is where we come to talking about a possible new face, another new rising star in the Conservative Party. And of course, like most rising stars, some of them have had pretty meteoric falls as soon as they've had any real power or responsibility within their roles. So who are we talking about today? Well, none other than Mariah Fraser. So don't worry if you don't know anything about her, because we're going to go over who she is, what she's involved with, and what she's been up to recently. So as always, uh, thank you very much to all those people who do watch uh, and help support the channel. Like I say, please remember to click on the like, share, and subscribe button. There is the Pony Club down below where you can, uh, again, to help support the channel. There's the Patreon page. There's the YouTube thank you button. And, of course, there's the Buy Me Coffee link as well, which helps support the channel too, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And, of course, there's the like and share button as well. You can always click. Uh, that costs you nothing, and that helps support the channel. And, of course, Leave a comment down below uh, to what you think. This once again, new rising star in the Tory party. Is this someone who will actually be a, a mover and a shaker, maybe in the post-Sunak world? Or is this yet another, shall we say, someone who comes in with a big bang and then, well, leaves with a minor pop when they when they leave? Um, but as always, uh, let me know what you think down in comments down below. But as, before we do this, thank you very much to everyone who does help and support the channel, and on with this. So, this was the profile of her put forward by The Guardian. Um, the title of Maria Fraser, the rising Tory force who was bowled over by Trump. So, sandwiched between the speeches of Jacob Rees-Mogg and Lee Anderson, a less familiar figure took to the stage on Tuesday's launch of the Popular Conservative Group. Looking slightly nervous, she glanced at her notes and began, Margaret Thatcher. What a, what, a, what, a, what a magnificent way to open a Tory speech. In fact, I couldn't think of a more Tory way to open a speech by just beginning with Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> and followed by Margaret Thatcher and, well, Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> anyway, back to it. So, anyone wondering about Maria Fraser's political views, even after those opening words, was soon left in no doubt. As the Conservative candidate for a safe Surrey constituency in Epsom and Edwell launched into a full-throated attack on the nanny state. The former parliamentary staffer turned city lawyer lambasted Rishi Sunak's policy to ban smoking, saying, in a point that public health experts may quibble with, there was no link between the controls on tobacco and smoking rates. Frazier went on to call the COVID lockdowns, quote, the nanny state in a most monstrous form, arguing that if people choose to have a cigarette after a long day at work, then officials should just keep uh, keep out and let them do it. Except <laughs> a, a, a cigarette is not a virus. <laughs> and yes, 
there is always the chance that you know smoking x number of cigarettes a day will eventually go contribute some significant way to your death um you know spreading covid to other people to your family other work colleagues etc um really you know sh- there's there's not a, a freedom of choice in that <laughs> but again uh as we've said before these free market fundamentalists have very uh, quite weird and wacky views when it comes to uh covid lockdowns but the conference a conservative conference attenders will have had a full uh, fat libertarianism espoused many times, especially now at fringe events. And it was interesting about Fraser's six-minute speech was that it may say about the post-election Tory party. Fraser overcame this tough composition in January to be adopted for the ex-minister's Chris Grayling seat, in which is very likely to make it into the Commons even after a heavy defeat of the parliamentary conservatives to a rump of MPs. So once again, she's going to be one of the survivors. And the making of the future Tory party or or whatever it is going to become in these civil wars to come is pretty much going to be determined by who is left. So make no mistake, because she's in a safe seat, because she seems to be somewhat being, you know, propped up, being a rising star, there's going to be a lot of pressure on her to sort of push her in to, you know, a a certain direction. This is why, having a look at what she's saying, offering this, you know, full-fat libertarianism, quite important to show which way the Conservative Party is going to go in the future. Um, So, once there, her long history in the party began what was a peer once called the your classic low tax tartan Tory and the University of Edinburgh's young conservatives. And this could see Fraser now shape the trajectory of a post Sunak era. And if Fraser is an uh, augury of things to come, then the future could be a very distinctly populist, even maybe Trump like. Shortly before a speech to the Popcons, Liz Truss helmed the Tory fringe group, and Frazier made headlines after comments made back in 2016 about the former US president now re-emerged. Frazier said that she had been working with the conservative Young Women organization and told the STV she had, quote, never been as excited about a political candidate as I had about Trump, as she planned to travel to the US for an election. She said, I don't see Russia as a natural enemy. Well, that is incredibly worrying <laughs> for a whole host of reasons, um, especially in the light of Trump's comments about Russia and NATO. And, you know, well, it's OK if, you know, you attack a, a NATO country because we're not going to come to help. <laughs> yeah, um, very worrying indeed. <sighs> um, anyway, it continues. She added, saying that she backed Trump's plan to instead focus on Islamist groups. While Frazier did back away from this stance, she said a friend had told the Times in uh, that she, when it unearthed these comments, that, quote, a lot had changed. And in the interviewing eight years, such a leaning into populist concerns could help her very well fit in as a new MP into a party led by someone like Kibi Badnock or Suella Braverman. Frazier was educated at private schools in Hong Kong and Bangkok and has three siblings. After university, she worked as a parliamentary uh, in the, in the parliament and took a series of other politics related jobs taking time off to finish a very distant third in the northern lancashire seat of coatsbridge uh Kristen and belcher back in the 2015 general election several people who knew fraser at the time said that she was quote no secret that she was a conservative in fact she was an already unfettered libertarian and she kept this to herself she was a genuinely loving nice human being said one person who worked with her she said That's partly why I was a bit appalled for this turn on this TV this week and see her hanging out with Liz Truss and co. Another said she was always very hardworking and diligent, so I expected big things. But it's fair to say this was a surprise. While her current views uh, will make her very popular within the party, it remains to be seen if this would be a case with voters more widely. Tim Bale, a professor of Queen's University at London, said... Uh, an historian of the Conservative Party said that libertarianism had a long, if not always successful, history with them. 
it goes right back to the 19th century when the Liberal Party was very much seen as the party of interfering do-gooders and the part Tory party was seen as the friend of the common man and the good life and partly in alliance with the Brewers, she said. While Truss and her allies urged a very radical free market ideology, her majority support in all face of the polling suggests seems is very much a kind of majority uh, pluralist, Bale said. Neoliberalism is shared by very few voters, and throwing off the constraints of the nanny state does not exactly squeal uh, uh, square with the polling either. Which, again, very true. We've even seen conservatives time and time again say that they would favor a large state, that they would actually like taxes to go to more, you know, state things that the state does, not this, you know, secret thing of, oh, we're going to lower taxes, reduce the size of the state, which I always said, if someone says that, you should say, well, what is it the state is no longer going to do? What is it that the state is, you know, no longer going to fund if you're going to cut taxes? Uh, you know, <laughs> the usual, shall we say, libertarian hang-up questions that tend to get very stuck. Um, but make no mistake, uh, as was said there, this could be someone who very, 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 very much in a party led by someone like uh, Braverman or even, you know, Badnock, depending, of course, if they survive the next Tory uh, general election, um, could very, very well be someone who somewhat becomes a bit of a mover and shaker within the party. So make no mistake, um, this is a name to sort of at least remember for the time being. Uh, but don't worry if she doesn't come up in like a, a year for like at least a year or so. Um, that will be fine. Again, Penny Moore didn't, really didn't come to more prominence even after we did that video of her for another at least couple of months, or at least six months after. So these things have a sort of a time period and sort of, you know, working themselves out. But we'll see uh, what happens with her. Will she become a rising star? Or... You know, will she, shall we say, reach the top of the dizzying heights and then fizzle out, as most of these uh, Tory rising stars have tend to do when they've, well, been given any sort of role or responsibility. However, of course, they will be in opposition and they won't really have that, shall we say, uh, opportunity to provide, um, you know, that they are uh, capable of doing these things. Uh, it'll be more, you know, act as a mouthpiece and, you know, be in opposition. So we'll see what happens. But this is definitely someone in the future we should probably keep an eye on to see what happens with her and, well, where she goes from here. But as always, thank you very much for watching. And of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.